Yeah, it's um, it's been everything too. Like the days are going past very quickly. They are. You know, they were once intermission. Finish mm -hmm. end. I mean, the rest of the month, yeah. Yes. Let me know it. Yeah, start. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, one more. What, what is it? Yeah, February, sir. Yeah, yeah, we're on the 21st. Yeah, by next Monday, yeah, that's it, we know, we know. Yeah, by Monday. Went by very quickly. Quickly. This month, equally. Very quickly. Super fast. Super fast. And we all must your session and we come back in. Vamos. So which district are you coming from, sir? EPRUSD. Yes. I I really enjoy I mean the travel. Oh I guess I um in the mornings I like I talk to my my parents. To you take advantage? Yeah. Then heading back I call friends, see so There you go. So I mean <laughs> that drive is helpful. Yes. To catch up with the post. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, yeah, so, so it's nice. Do you live close by? Or can you? No, I live in Campo Saragosa. Saragosa, I know. By America's High School. Okay. So it's probably like, like two minutes away from America's High School. And you? I live by like around five points. So far. <laughs> but actually it's it doesn't seem because it, like far because I don't get any traffic because I live close to the 54 okay so I just get on the 54 and straight you, you get the from the 54 you get the border or I, I get the border high okay. oh, I'll see. all over here there's no traffic that's good um and then we go at a good speed. Um, and then so Golder Road, I don't really get traffic coming this way. So mm -hmm. like probably like 40 minutes. Well, not bad. Mm -hmm. Plus what's helping is that you live close to the 54. Yeah, yes. Maybe, like, uh, so I don't, I don't get any traffic there. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my way back is when I get a little bit of more traffic over here by Socorro Road where I'm trying to get again the 54 because if I try to get like a freeway unless I go over here to the Clint Santa Isayo exit but you know how they're construction on those bridges I know even here, because I'm coming from Baden, mm -hmm. but um, in the mornings, just uh, you're on the, the, the light. Oh no, I have to go around. I get that road, that small road that- um, Okay, right here? On uh, the one that's next to, what is it? The, the Lily Market, okay. right near the high school. Yes. And that one will take me all the way to the, close to the border. Mm -hmm. We all just, yeah, they go, uh, then I cut, there's like a new, new area of like, um, like a trailer park. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Back here. Yeah, they may go for that, but because other times I, I mean, that, that, this was my route. Mm -hmm. uh, all that Socorro, and then I would turn right, right, real quick here, but with this construction, forget it, I've been late. Yes. So if I rather me vengo un poquito más temprano, mm -hmm. pero I do travel a little bit more, pero no estoy estancada en traffic. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I feel. I mean, I just rather either sometimes go through over here through Socorro Road and even go to Isleta. If there were like a few weeks ago, there was a semi truck, a truck that uh, turned over. Oh my! And um, there was a lot of traffic, so I just. Continued all the way to his letter. Yeah. Sí. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. are, are you a teacher here or? Yes, I'm one of the interventionists, the okay. reading interventionists, yes, okay. for third and fourth. Okay. And then we have Ms. Martinez, she's also the reading interventionist 
for fifth and sixth. Okay. And then Mr. Sierra will teach math. So just talking about a little bit of the dual program, my name is Josue Palomino. Yes. I'm the instruction officer for dual language uh, or the bilingual program. Um, how, what are you expecting like when you're servicing your kiddos, um, first language, second language? Do you guys have the resource that you need? How are your schedules gonna look like? With or, this new dual language? Yes. Uh, they're going to do an on call. Oh, for the teachers? Yeah, yeah. they like to send them this morning. Why do they have to last week? Like for right now, with um, I'm servicing bilingual bilingual phenomenon. But I hate teachers. So we can have like third grade teachers make their way to the start room. Third grade teachers make their way to the start room. The way I would fit everyone, I only I'm just giving you my schedule right now. Like on Mondays, Mondays and Tuesdays, I serve bilingual. Mm -hmm. And then Wednesdays and Thursdays, I serve monolith all day. Mm -hmm. Now with this new schedule, I mean, well, not with this new schedule, but the new coming year, I mean, we're going to start with a dual language, mm -hmm. right? Híjole, I'm, I'm not sure. I would need to brainstorm and see yeah. how. And, and right now, I, my intention is not to overwhelm you. Of course not. It's, um, we're just preparing, okay? It's not going to be anything that you have not that you're not doing. Perhaps maybe what you're doing already works, and you don't have to modify anything. Um, it's just we just need to be thinking about um, not only the time to service our kids, but we need um, we need to look at the resources that we're going to need. Yes, definitely. Um, maybe they're going to need more resources. Um, so those are the the things that I just want us to start thinking and talking about. Yes, definitely. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. How many are we using? Six, two more, okay. Ms. Moreira is not here. Should I come to this? Or she came, but she had a doctor's appointment. Okay, so it's only one more, Ms. Okay, and I, I mean, I don't want to ex extend. Um, I just want to basically is review a little bit of what we covered with Dr. Medina. And I want to um, show you a little bit of what our, our schedules can look like. And I will be sending Ms. Akai a um, uh, survey, and I just want to get your feedback on what you think, what changes we can make. Very simple. So we're all here, yes. so we could start. Mm -hmm. yes. I Like I mentioned, I don't really want to take more than what I have to. So good afternoon, my name is Josue Palomino. Uh, I'm blessed to be with you this, this Monday. Ya dijeron, híjole, ya apenas es lunes y ya. But I mean, um, I'm just glad to be here with you guys. So, voy a, um, como dice el Dr. Medina, voy a traslenguer, les voy a Voy a hablar un poquito de los dos idiomas, just to be practicing and modeling that. We, when we are translanguaging, it's okay. I mean, our, our students are probably going to do that. But when we are in English time, we do ourselves, we want to keep, we want to stay in English. When it's, uh, when it's pues, all right, de español, pues tratar de, de estar eh, en español. Nuestra misión del programa, el programa del lenguaje dual del Distrito Escolar Independiente de San Luis Arrio, desarrollará un Desarrollará, desarrollará, disculpen el lunes, estudiantes bilingües altamente competentes mientras fomenta el éxito académico y la comunicación cultural al satisfacer las necesidades afectivas, lingüísticas y cognitivas en ambos idiomas. 
And like I mentioned, maybe you already know this, and uh, but I just want to be um, have ourselves just remember because we're, you're you're doing so many things. You're already probably in star mode, yeah, thinking about how is that going to look, making the changes, working with your groups. Um, but at the same time, this is coming for our uh, third graders, our, our second graders right now. This is something probably new. Have any of you been uh, in another district where they already had implemented dual language program? And can you share your experience with that? The way they were doing it, it was like um, the math part. One of the teachers was doing it just in Spanish, math and science. So it was a two teacher model? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, reading and um, social studies, it was in English. It was, was, a different teacher. was this in third grade? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Perfect. And as we've seen in the past, this chart, the Thomas and Collier, um, we will not see growth in the first years. It's basically until middle school and higher that they show that growth that we, we want them to, to achieve. When we are in our trainings, um, we're going to be talking about three pillars, okay? And these are our three pillars that we've decided for our district to be part um, of the dual language program. So the goal number one is being bilingual, bilingualism and by literacy. Goal or pillar number two, they'll um, be at grade level academic achievement in both programs languages. And that third pillar is the social cultural competency, okay? I know that we have also talked, uh, spoken about getting the, there's a book, remember the book that they shared with you? I believe it's like, I, um, we're trying to get copies of those for you. Uh, unfortunately, um, if we print them out of the district, um, they, they're trying to sell us, like just to make those copies, like $60 a book. We already made the copies. Oh, you already have them? So, but we'll still have any if you need extra. And then uh, the, the one that you send us now for the new Miss Rescue Yes. It's like a 92 page. Yes. Package. You already have? Wow. So that's, that's, thank you for doing that. We um, were trying to print those um, at our high school, and unfortunately, the students are having an event and, and they're, um, they don't have them yet for us. But if you need access to those, please let us know. And Ms. Akai, um, thank you for, for doing, making those copies. So one of the most important things, how does my schedule look like? Can I have your name so I could remember? Um, Travieso. Ms. Travieso. Enriquez. Enriquez. Ramirez. Ramirez, okay. Travieso. Mm -hmm. Enriquez. Ramirez. Loveless. Loveless. Ms. Brasher. Ms. Brasher. Okay. I'll, I'll, I, yo era de esos estudiantes que nunca me aprendía los nombres, eh? I need the tag, it's gonna take me a little bit of time, pero. Um, so, <clears throat> how does our schedule look like? I'm pretty sure most of you are, are asking yourself, yes? Okay, so before I go into the schedules, um, we've been working with the other campuses, Loya and Zambrano, that's where our dual language started. And we've noticed it some, we, we have to make some adjustments. And this is what our schedule is going to be looking like, hopefully um, next school semester. One of the things that I'm doing with, with them is what I'm doing with you. I'm, I'm sharing schedules, asking for opinion, and I'm go, also gonna be working with your principals to uh, finalize this, okay? So this, these are not uh, the final product, okay? This is a work in progress. So for third grade, we are looking at example one. This is a one day model. That means that you will not be uh, alternating. It's the same schedule throughout the entire school year, okay? You would have your 45 minute intervention you would have your um, Spanish block, but it's about one, 
60s. 90 minutes. 90 minutes. And then this is about 40, by 50 minutes. 50, 55, 60. Six, 60 minutes. Okay, so 90, 60. Social studies has to be integrated with the Spanish. Ciencias will always be in Spanish and you have your 90 minute block for math. Okay? Remember, this is just an example. If you ask me, as a third grade teacher that I was, I, I don't think this is, this would work for me. Pero, I want your opinion. I will be sending this uh, power, this Google slide to your, uh, to Ms. Akai, and she will share it with you, okay? And so, that, that one is uh, just one day? This is just a one so day model. in the morning, Spanish, yes. and afternoon? No. Spanish. Yeah, well, basically it is. Yeah. Basically it is. Okay. After your science sign, it would go into your math. So your English are combining with your language arts? Yes, ma'am. Right? What is, what is the rationale of doing science in Spanish? Um, most of it was because the lower grades were, were also covering in Spanish. And I'll show you a schedule right now about on the lower grades. Okay? Don't kill me. It's just an example. We had to work <laughs> with it. This is, this is not my favorite one. But I still have to, I still have to give you guys options what it would look like. Okay, it, it, it's just options. Okay. If I'm asking questions, it's not because I think that it's not worse. I'm just asking. No, questions. no, and that's just, good. That's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> See. Just to clarify. Yes, yes. no, yeah, so no. Like Thank you. That's another reason why, because um, like I need to start thinking about like fifth grade, fifth grade test science mm -hmm. in, in in English. Mm -hmm. Only the newcomers are the ones usually so. The, the test in Spanish. So yes. that's what we're also thinking when we start thinking about it. Because if I start great, we're still doing science in Spanish. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's just that we have to provide options. We're not just going to give one. Even this schedule, if you say, oh, we like it, but just let's move science in English, and then your administrator likes it, I mean, that's what you, we agreed to. I mean, that's why we are creating a committee and working as a team. This is Schedule B. Schedule B, it's very balanced. One week, language arts is in Spanish uh, with combined. It, it's not integrated, but the social studies would be in that Spanish uh, day, uh, time and treatment, and then after that, you would have science and math in English. And you would have 20 minutes for English language development. So whatever non-transferable skills that you would like to teach that week, you have 20 min minutes to cover those um, English language developments. Week B, you wouldn't be covering uh, ELAR or you wouldn't be doing the re reading component or the language arts in Spanish would be doing them in English. Social studies would also be in English, but now science and math would be in Spanish. And you would have 20 minutes for um, that uh, Spanish language development. Are we gonna be repeating that content or we're gonna move on? While we teach in Spanish for week A, are we gonna teach it in no, week B? No, no, you're, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, gonna repeat, you're gonna move on. Okay, so what do you think? Those are the only ones? Right now, though, I mean, from this, this is the base. <laughs> from here, these are the ones that we would be working on. Um, in my opinion, I think that this, this one, just my opinion, I, I think this would work perfectly. Actually, we used to do that, huh? That's what we something similar. We have week A and we have language. Yeah. So that was our bilingual time. Not exactly the same, mm -hmm. but it was very, very similar. And this, this is true to the 50-50 model that's what we, used that to we are trying to follow. Now, like I mentioned, if you have more ideas, this is just an example. 
I, I mean, I had to create, but I cannot create 20 different schedules and because they're all gonna look different. But there should be a rationale. Maybe you decide, Mr. Palomino, this doesn't work here for us because we, we think we should change this. If we keep the example A, what I really think that you could hurt yourself is if you still have students who are not developed in their L1, they, they might be struggling, but I don't know how, how much. In Let me, that one, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. In this one, on the first one, that we have uh, in the morning, the content, and then we go back to English. Are we gonna repeat the lesson right there, or we just? No, you gonna, continue. Wait, Let's say if so you're, if you're during that repeat, week, I, during that week, if you plan to target certain standards, you 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 complete that. But I mean, you're not gonna. We're gonna reteach. You're not gonna reteach. Then you're then just continuing. No matter what. But then normally, let's say that you're doing uh, theme, you know, or you're doing mm -hmm. something like that. If you do it in the morning, most likely you won't you won't be done with that in the morning. So the afternoon that you will be continuing with the lesson, but in English. Yeah, no. Most likely it will be the same lesson. You know what I'm saying? It will be the continuation, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it will be the same topic. Yeah, but it's just going to be. do it in, in the schedule. But in the first night, um, in the first schedule, does it, I mean, does it include the math in Spanish? Because no, it only says, English. like, it's only doing it in English. It's so is there any time so that we're going to have to do it in Spanish? If, let's say, this is the one, one schedule, we don't have week A, week B. You would always teach, um, Looking at a time and treatment, maybe we could try and say, science will always be in English, math will always be in English. But um, you you would have just a limited of time for, for the English. Um, what really hurts you here is how you distribute the time for the language arts, basically. Because you have to make them shorter. So, when you're doing readers workshop, writers workshop, is 30 minutes, that would be, probably be a question. Is 30 minutes sufficient for you? So no reading and writing has to be along each other. It cannot be in a separate context, it cannot be about the age of yeah. And, yeah. Before, before it was more like a separate, separate context, yeah, but now, now it has to yeah, be no reading, yeah. So that one should not be a problem. I'm kind of, I think. I think I kind of, because, it was, when we had the week A and week B, it was hard. A lot of the teachers didn't like it. I think the only thing, and just in my opinion, is the science would just, we would want to do that in English, I think, just to align with the fifth grade. And even the resources that you're following yeah, in they're science, in. we won't have that many resources. So that's another mm -hmm. thing that we need to think of. What resources are we going to get? So, so when I send this it, survey, when we send the survey, yeah. put all those comments, because we're gonna look at these as a committee, okay? Um, Who's in the committee? Well, obviously, um, Dr. Segovia, Ms. Frescas, I submitted some names for your principal, and she sent me some names. Uh, it's gonna be principals, um, and we're gonna have these conversations. I think it was in Enrique's name. Oh, that's the one that we get mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I have another question. Yes, ma'am. When we're teaching the math that is gonna be English only, are we gonna be able to teach it, uh, some stuff in Spanish, like for the newcomers, like the way? Well, that obviously we're doing you could do your strategies, but your lesson is supposed to be in English. So we cannot uh, mix English and Spanish. Um, like we're doing it. I mean, I, I maybe what I understand is you can always you, your students will always need. A support, support. Uh -huh. but the the lesson the lessons should be. Um, and most of the lessons are in English, no? Yeah. Oh no, yes. Yeah, oh, no, 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 that's no, what no, it's no, 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 Because no, remember, no, even in my class, which we're still bilingual class, so you will need, still need okay. to support the uh, newcomers. Okay. So we're gonna be able to give them the material in Spanish. What for him? Oh, my newcomers. Yeah, for the newcomers. Yes. Okay. So you could do your GLAD strategies. You could do your SIRP strategies. But the lesson just basically English. the intention is it's, it's English. You're you're delivering your lesson in English. Obviously, if you have and and then you also for those um, interventions or support, you we follow the their IEP and and then 
Um, there's many things, but the intention is that we want to really stay truly mm -hmm. to the language because that is what we're we're focusing on. Okay. Um, um, let me give you an example of the time and treatment. Mr. Bellamy, yes, ma'am. Uh, like right okay. Um, we are we will be making some adjustments to to the schedules mm -hmm. because uh, it's my understanding that they were doing one entire week of everything in English and then following one entire week of in Spanish. So our kids are getting confused sometimes because they they do not really have that time to develop both languages at the same time. It, it's, it wasn't happening at all in all classrooms, but I have to be honest, we have to revamp and change some things. So this is what we're working with them. Like I mentioned, this is not the final product, okay? It's what we are envisioning to make those adjustments so that they have that support. We wanna make pre-K not a 50-50 model, but 90-10 pre-K. Do you know why, why the reason? The foundation. The foundation. The foundation. Um, research says that they need to develop that L1, a strong L1 first language, in order to make those that transition. But if they don't have that foundation, then they're, they're getting confused. Second, pre-K, even though we expose them, they are not really, they're, they're doing a lot of social skills. They're doing a lot of motor skills. They're doing a, a lot of simple recognition, but they're not doing a lot of process, um, connecting like arithmetic problems. Where they're not doing word problems. They're doing simple uh, identifi identifying letter, letter sounds. Um, so that's why we want to mostly work with them with the 90-10. Okay, so this is how it looks for them. And we really are looking at option two for them, where they have Estudios Sociales, Estrellita, Read Aloud, Share Reading, Writer's Workshop, and then they have Foundations, a Read Aloud, they see, oh, over here, and then they see Math and Science in Spanish, okay? so that most of their day is in Spanish. We are also looking at our community. La mayoría de nuestros niños son hispanos, son mexicoamericanos, and their language at home is el español. We're not totally forgetting about English because this is where they have their English language development, but they will not be getting as confused as they could be if they're seeing a 50-50 because Either, even I have a three-year-old and I have a five-year-old. Y cuando yo le digo, ¿qué letra es esta? En veces la E me dice I o me dice E. So, I mean, he's, he's obviously getting them confused because he needs to understand that, the language, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, on the schedule that they're looking at for Loya? So okay. they're going towards option two? We're, we're looking at option two. And it's not finalized. I'm just being honest with you, and I'm trying to, so so that you understand what is a, the trajectory that we're taking. For kinder, they're moving into a week A, week B, where they also have a very strong first language. They have English language development. That week A, social studies and sciences in Spanish, and. Uh, they have math in English. Week B, they're doing it uh, in Spanish. Yes. English language development. Now they're doing social studies and science in English. And math is in Spanish. But we are still giving it a lot of importance to that first teach in Spanish. Kinder and first are very similar. They have also week A, week B. They still have that support. 
they still have that English language development. And we're, 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 we're swapping um, subjects again. And that's where we get to you guys. But, so I'll be sending this, um, these schedules and and the survey. Can you survey. send us two, like, what currently what second grade is using? Because this year was second grade, those are the kids that we're going to get in mm -hmm. next year. Yes. So we need to yes. start and that's, that's a question that we also had because I had this meeting on Friday um, with Ed Alarcón. Um, I met this morning with uh, the instruction officer at uh, Zambrano. So I'm constantly collecting data, collecting information. If we need to adjust, tweak a little bit something for this cohort that is just coming for you from second grade, we will. Um, but we need to make a final final schedule for the rest of, of our dual language program. Does, does that make sense? Because if you make any changes, it will be only for three months. Yes. So we're looking at, I understand, we're going to look at the strengths mm -hmm. um, of this cohort from the second graders to third grade. So when they take the star, they don't come or we support them as much as possible so that they could be successful. But this schedule is going to be the schedule that we're probably not this cohort. Uh, I don't know. It's not only like a decision that I can make, it's a committee. But whenever we decide to do adjustments, we do need to finalize the schedule for our dual language program for, from now on. So that's why the schedules are going to be from pre-K all the way to third grade. And I'll also be working with fourth grade teachers, fifth grade teachers, so that we know what path we're going to be taking. So let's say that we choose one schedule and then um, and um. When we start the year, we see that it's not working. Are we gonna have to change that one? Because there's the probability to be changing the schedule during that year. I mean, or hopefully, 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 we make a decision that we don't have to be making changes anymore, um, because that doesn't help us. That doesn't help the students. Uh -huh. um, so that's why we are working together to make sure that we cover all little. Things that we, we, como dice, no tenemos que ir con una lupa, um, because we cannot be changing. Ah, no sirvió. Bueno, déjenles cambio esto. Porque eso nos atrasaría también. No, entonces lo que le digo, vamos a ver cómo vienen este grupo de estudiantes y, y presentárselos a ustedes para cómo ayudar. Eh, yo sé que la pandemia, este grupo que tienen, ha de ser muy difícil, porque vienen atrasados. O sea, esa. Esa, es, eso yo ya lo sé, pero vamos a tratar de finalizar un, un este time and treatment que, que, que podamos usar a través de ya todo nuestro, nuestra, nuestro programa. So, any questions, teachers? I know it's already going to be 3.30. I don't want to keep you more than I have to. Remember, when your dual language um, classroom looks like, we're using green for Spanish, blue for English. Basically, if you're looking at the classroom, you could have this side, the English, and that side, the Spanish. If you want to combine them, just have a title where you label it and you like de um, quote them correctly. <laughs> Es que yo uso rojo y azul. Sí. A mí cambiaron al verde. No tengo plumas sí. verdes. Este, una de las razones porque cuando yo llegué al, al distrito ya estaba así. Y yo pregunté por qué. And they said because Canutillo y PSD, uh, most of our district have these. If we have students coming from another district, more likely they already are familiar. It's more like a universal thing. Um, but it's not because I like those two colors, okay? It was. Yeah, a, <laughs> <laughs> so again, Mr. Bellamy, I might be a dead answer, but what is what is the model you're using right now in second grade? What is a what schedule are they using right now in second grade? Um, I could look at it and probably um, sit with you on, and look at that so you could be more familiar. I just got the schedules. 
I did not see campuses. I just saw great level and and um, and I did get them. Obviously, our second graders right now are at uh, San Brano, and we were looking at them. Um, I can't remember out of my head exactly what they look like, but but I could. Um, I can see. I can see. Okay. But they did. are using like an A B Kindle. Like it is an A Kindle. Kindle. Yes. Yes. Everyone's using the weekend weekly. Right now. And now the schools have uh, to be using the same one. For example, se la cómo quiere la B o es uno en general. Por la. Ahorita, ahorita como como. Realmente están más en Zambrano, ¿verdad? Eh, voy a hablar de lo que estamos, tenemos ahorita. Sí, sí, sí. Es no más uno. Ahorita que ya lo vamos a subir a tercero y son dos campuses, vamos a verlo desde el punto de vista primero. Vista primero los directores este, y luego el equipo. Sí, no, no, ¿Tiene no, que ser uno solo o puede ser diferente cada escuela? En nuestra visión, lo que yo he hablado con, nuestra, con Dr. Segovia es que quiere alinearlo. Quiere alinearlo a través. Sí, este, quiere alinearlo yo, yo quisiera lo que ustedes gusten pero también depende mucho de qué es lo que el comité mira hacia el distrito qué es lo que, qué es lo que ven mejor para, para el programa so there, you, you can have them back um, your bridge um, so that's what it looks like with uh, colors mm -hmm. y atrás pueden hacer sus conexiones and then there's my information If you have any questions, please call me, and um, I could come even during your prep time if you have more questions. If you have more ideas, I can also come and, and write them down if you don't want to send them. Um, but I'll be for, forwarding a, uh, a survey with Ms. Akai, and then you'll have those conversations. I know right now it's a lot to process, think about it, um, and we, we first want to support our students, But if we think about your students, you're, as a teacher, you're going to pick the best what's for them. So we will also support you in that way. Okay? I know it's already time. I don't want to keep, keep you longer. Thank you. And if you have more questions, I'll stay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Teachers. Um, yeah, like we could, we could, we could always have their feedback. But basically, uh, um, this is bilingual students, bilingual. teachers are the ones who are going to be working yes. with our. I mean, we could always get feedback from everyone. We we we, we want them. We want to get their their input. Yeah, it's important to have their buy-in as well. Okay. That was my big question. I'm like, I wonder what they're using. I wonder if it's helpful. And if it's not, you know, what we need to do to keep it so that mm -hmm. when the students get here, they're successful. So we're working very hard trying to make the little adjustments um, that we need to make. One of my concerns was making sure that they're coming even from pre-K with a very strong foundation. foundation. Yeah, absolutely. And if we limit the time and... Um, They, they, they won't have the time to the, develop truly in their full, first language. And that's why you have many kids, um, even with the phonics, mixing the sounds, mixing the letters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So I'm just opening my email so I can show you my... Uh... So it's my understanding that they have one week English, one week Spanish. Um, as far as second grade, correct? As far as second grade. So the whole week is English, whole week is Spanish. And I'm opening my email so that I could show you one of the teacher schedule. Do you have all the teacher schedules? I think so. I was just wondering. Okay. It's because I started to collect data to analyze everything. Yes. Um, But then I see all great levels, so I'm trying to remember. 
Exactly. And then we, I am also working with TA in this specific area, mm -hmm. schedules and time and treatment. Mm -hmm. um, we are part of uh, the Texas dual language uh, framework. Mm -hmm. We're piloting this, so we're getting a lot of good information on um, making sure that we're doing it correctly. And the implementation, implementation of the program is, is correct. It's interesting because I had the same concern. Like when you're like, oh God, I want to say it in English. <laughs> yeah. I think that would be like the only piece. I think for me, it's challenging to keep track of week A, week B. I think it's it's more difficult. Because we we we, or, we had it before and it was hard. It was hard. What week is it? What? Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> so I want to know, you know. But, just curious to see how it's going to. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, gentlemen. <sighs> so I'm just going for them. Everybody here? Yes, everybody. Okay. Well, except for the one that left. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to hide the teacher's name, mm -hmm. but this is a second grade, and this is what they're following right now. And then, see how it has the doesn't need foundations? Mm -hmm. So th that means when they alternate the, the week. Okay, so A and then B, okay. Yes. So what they're doing when it's, um, they were doing like one week English, and then that week, all Spanish. So that's what we're trying to change now with the schedules. We want to balance it out where <clears throat> every day they see English and Spanish. Hmm. Okay. Do you know when they have their PLCs? Maybe two? Um, I know they have them throughout the, the day. And some of them have them like us. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I was like, how do they manage that one? No, they don't. They don't. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So then basically they would do everything in English for a week, everything in Spanish, and just keep to that schedule. Yes. And what okay. we want to do is change that because the students, they need to be exposed every day. Yes. Not not just one, down, one, one language. They actually need to grow in both. So the 90-10 uh, plan, the, you want to change only for pre-kinder? Yeah, only for pre-kinder, um, and that's just because making sure that that foundation. Okay, is and then starting kinder, it will be 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. You know what, I actually like the, the first schedule better than the... Me too, I like schedule. No, that's, and that's I said because we, ha we have done it before, and I'm telling you, it was not, it was not our favorite one. <laughs> it was hard to keep up with the weeks, yes. and then... For this way, at least it's more content based, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like math and science would be English, and then reading, they do get the opportunity <clears throat> to practice both languages. So, talking about our second graders, yes. Um, even though they do see both, they see every subject in both languages, but we feel that they're not growing um, as fast because of one entire week of one language and then mm -hmm. one entire week. They don't have that time to process everything. Um, what would be your concerns for those third graders? The, with those second graders coming to third grade? Yeah, and, I, and really, if we're honest, there's a lot of other factors affecting those second graders besides just the time and treatment. They do have that large COVID gap, you know, just like everybody mm -hmm. else. So as they're coming up to us right now, I kind of agree with Ms. Nakai. I'd prefer to stick with more of a content-based time and treatment 
like the sample A schedule with the understanding of science being in English because if nothing else, that's what we would follow here as a campus to prepare them. And then maybe next year, like do more of a, I don't know, more English as far as- Let me ask you this. Um, language arts. In regards to expectations to start because third grade is already going to be, mm -hmm. second grade, they don't do start, third grade they do. So we have the more pressure that we need to, yes. we need to close those gaps. Mm -hmm. uh, for, probably for pre-kinder, kinder, first, second, it's going to be more into targeting the language. Mm -hmm. Here with us, we need to target it. And I'm not saying the academic, but it has to be because of the star, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Are they expecting the district for us that if we do the dual language for them to see more kids testing in English or in no, Spanish? No, no. Have you heard any of the, no, uh, that? No, okay. no, no, no. Um, because ultimately, is the alpaca decision that we have yes, to make, yes. but... Uh, I want to make sure that it's not there an expectation because of the no. program that it's so teaching. So the dual language program is not an early exit program. But then we're also not expecting everyone to test in Spanish. They need, they're going to be testing. First of all, it's it's an outpack decision. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not taking in the beginning or it's towards the end that that we really see where that student's going to be successful um, taking that assessment. Obviously, you have a DRE, DL mm -hmm. data to mm -hmm. to help you make those decisions. You have uh, I, uh, I station. sometimes it could be reliable, sometimes it's not the best assessment. Um, but we, there's no expectation for, uh, like we want them all in Spanish, we want them all in English. And then the dual language is not an early exit program. I mean, we, we do not expect them to to, we do want them to grow. Obviously, they have to grow because mm -hmm. they're emerging and good, good first teach, good, good teaching. I mean, but the expectation is not them to exit like the program because they're or they they have to be taking uh, the most of the students need to be testing this event in English or Spanish. There's no. I mean, we follow the student needs. I don't know if I answered your. Yeah, no, question. no, yes. Yes. because yeah, is it. A, with these new programs and, and everything changing, there's you know there's always expectations. That's what I was asking. Yeah, no. Another thing, is there a, a I like a, a, right now this year I have three bilingual teachers. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, will that uh, like let's say that if I say well, okay this the one this teacher is very good in math mm -hmm. and and she can do the math in English mm -hmm. and then the other one can do like rotating can that be something that can we talk about it okay so we're talking about if I understand your question we're talking about two teacher model where one teacher teaches language art one teacher teaches math is that mm -hmm. yeah we, we could definitely work on that that first of all part of that conversation would have to be through your administrators mm -hmm. because they're the one who know if if I was the administrator, I would think where to put my best players. Mm -hmm. If you have a very strong math teacher that you know they rock in math and that your students are gonna grow, but is that that teacher bilingual certified? That would be one, probably one first concern because you cannot. Um, no, well, we wouldn't include the monolingual. I'm just saying, no, just but, using those three bilingual teachers, because okay. it's only the bilingual kids who are going to do a dual language. Okay, it? so you have three bilingual teachers, mm -hmm. but you want to group two of them. Well, I'm saying rotating between the three of them. Can that be done? I've never seen a three teacher no. model. I've seen a two teacher model, where they divide the content. Let's say, in the morning when they're doing math. Uh, math while the other group is doing math and science English, the other group that in the morning they're doing language arts well, and social studies. How is studies. it going to look for our fifth and sixth grade teachers? They are departmentalized. Well, just do you understand they, they, so they, be... Yeah, they t they just teach the subject and the students rotate. So if we do departmentalized like in third grade, can that can can I mean, that we could get creative. I'm not. I'm. I mean, mm -hmm. mentally, visually. Mm -hmm. I need to like get and yeah, well, yeah, put it as and, a and plan, then, uh -huh. and, and then work it out. Like I mentioned, I haven't seen a three teacher model mm -hmm. in middle school. I've seen it where they're departmentalized mm -hmm. and and they're each take a subject, but mm -hmm. the students then are rotating. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that we're doing is making sure that the other teachers are certified for for the ESL, yeah, yeah, ESL certified. Yeah, yeah, ESL but certified. that's yeah. 
the only reason for it is because it is hard to actually do even for the schedule a mm -hmm. it's hard to do everything in spanish no, without no english a, and then going that into would be english super creative Marissa Kai, and if you could just like i mean i all myself uh, i'll think about it but if you already have like an idea and you just no, not really. I, mean, I just want. I'm, I'm just looking at all the opportunities that we have because yeah, we need to, like you say, we need to be very creative. We're not close so. to anything. Uh -huh. I mean, we want what is going to best be best for our students, and what's going to be best for for our teachers. Um, so I mean, that that could be even a great idea that we implemented at at uh, Alarcon. I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I mean great ideas i mean yeah just like because i'm thinking well when it goes to fifth and sixth at the now, if, we're, license, if, if we're going to be the three teacher model um so you have three teachers what would they cover how would you develop and them? i think she's talking if i may yeah. okay specifically with fifth grade so right now this is the way we have it we have Ms. Galecha teaching the reading mm -hmm. we have mr tarango teaching the math and we have Ms. mesa teaching the science. science why because that's what we're tested on Okay. So we would probably just keep those same teachers, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, Ms. Galache would have the highest, the most difficult work because she would have to teach the language arts and reading English and Spanish. And how much time do they have? <sighs> well, they, they, rotate they rotate three times because there's times. three bilingual classes. So, so it's three bilingual teachers, although they do the rotation blocks, three how, times. How long? About 90, 90 minutes. 90 minutes? Mm -hmm. 90 minutes. So ELAR integrates social studies with ELAR? Well, uh, if, or? if we would think like, let's say third grade, okay, let's start with like, um, like their own, like my bilingual, my monolingual teachers only have two fifth grade teachers. Mm -hmm. So those ones, they don't have a third teacher to do their science. So they they do they their own their science. Own. Okay. So with with them, like I will, like I will think, and this is just an idea. It's not like yeah, it's something. It's just like, because seen, we haven't I, tried, we I, haven't I, tried I, to I figure it out. Like let's say all of the third grade bilingual teachers will do their own reading in Spanish, but when they rotate, that specific teacher will only do it in English or yeah. vice versa. Yeah, something like that. So and then I the other one will take care of math, and the other one will take care of like let's say science and social or something like that. Like like I said, yeah. it's just like talking. Plan it out in the time and treatment so we could see it. Uh -huh. Um, but we're not close to, to yeah, any no, of no, your no. ideas. No, yeah, like I said, when we did the work uh, week mm -hmm. A and week B, we had a lot of like, um, unfortunately, teachers really, and more in mm -hmm. third grade. It was where like, it was very hard to be doing one language one week, another language another week. It was getting very confused. Like you said, with, with the kids right now in second grade, how they're doing it, it was exactly what was happening here with the bilingual framework. They really didn't like it. It was not working for them. And we had a lot of like, but it was not working for the teachers. Unfortunately, we couldn't do anything. It was, it was that was the bilingual framework that we had at that yeah. time here. Um, I want to say what, like five years ago? Yeah, like five years ago. So that's when Ms. Frescas um, thank God she revised the, the framework, mm -hmm. but it was because of the same problem. It was not working. Mm -hmm. So then I see that same day the, the, the other schedule that you have, and I said, okay, in the morning we're doing Eng in Spanish, and the end of the afternoon they're doing English kind of like it a little bit better, but then I need to have other options that we can give the mm -hmm. teachers and, that's, and see that's, what, what will work. That was the intention. Mm -hmm. Giving you an idea of what it could look like, that's why I gave you one one day and then uh, mm -hmm. week by week or week A, week B, and then you as a team come up with what, what do you feel it works for you. Mm -hmm. um, we're not trying to dictate anything, we're trying to actually create a good 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 schedule for you guys mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i guess it, it was just an idea because third grade um actually to be departmentalized it's hard yeah. because as it is fifth and sixth grade they take forever to move from one room to another so those are the little things even mm -hmm. when we were in fourth grade we were when i used to be in fourth grade we were departmentalized and oh my god the kids are not mature enough to actually get their stuff and move to the other room but those are the problem and cons that you actually mm -hmm. have to look at and like okay what is going to work when we come to third grade yeah. uh, because it's not only the the kids getting something but it's the teachers need to learn mm -hmm. how to do it right the right way mm -hmm. um, which is the most concern that i have like we need to teach our teachers yes. it'll be an interesting year yeah yeah <laughs> and definitely we are considering the 
the challenges that you have. I mean, right now being a teacher in the classroom, I mean, it's hard. It's very hard. It's very frustrating because I mean, they're not only with the academic problems, there's the social, um, everything. I mean, there's a lot of things that are, are not only the kids, but their families are going through and went through. Um, so, I mean, there's so many things that we, mm-hmm. we need to take into consideration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we have to start somewhere. So yes. <laughs> I guess we're we here. <laughs> No. Okay. So it's like we will we will get together. Okay. Yes. With the teachers and see what is it. Okay. What so do they think what other I'll ideas give you they all have. my cards just in case that you have um, a question or anything. Thank you. Have, Ooh, nice. Okay. Has my. I didn't my get number. these. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like mine's white. Mine's. Oh, oh that's, that's right. why. <laughs> Thank you so much for no, your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And your patience with answering my questions. We really appreciate it. Yeah. I'm sure there's more coming. So yes, yes, and <laughs> so get and, ready. Yeah. <laughs> and then the the way that I think, I mean, it's fine not to have the answers, but let's just work together. Yes. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, when we we dictate some something to someone, and we tell them this is what I want you to do, mm-hmm. they might produce, but I mean, their heart is not there. So I'd rather we start the dual language program, everyone on board, everyone understanding the program, mm-hmm. and everyone feeling that they're doing the correct thing, um, and they feel well about how they're teaching and, and how they're doing it, Let and we get everyone this. involved. I know Dr. Me. Medina is doing the trainees, but he, of course they're doing virtual. Mm-hmm. Have you think about somebody coming and actually modeling a whole day, how it will look a whole day? Like, I would love to see that. Not like, oh, what will you do? Because mm-hmm. to tell the truth, we don't know what to do. Yes. But for somebody that it, that already knows how to do it, to come and teach that day, the whole day to the kids and, and the teachers being so there. Um, one, one of the things, and thank you for that question, is okay. we'll definitely um, work on that. And if we can get someone, I'll try to be here for you guys. Um, but I also want them to to see what's happening in the other schools, like Zambrano. We have some very good teachers that are doing great things. And if we are, could do like a little field trip and then show them, this is how it looks like, this is how it feels like. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's also a great thing that we could help our teachers see and feel success. Because sometimes, um, I feel and I think that some teachers overwhelm the, themselves with, ah, oh, yes, this is new. This is this is something that already uh, it's happening in the classrooms. This is something that yeah, they're already doing. But definitely, Ms. Akai, I'll, mm-hmm. um if we cannot find, we're trying to get PD that's in Spanish, so that the teachers and it's hard feel, to get PD in the, Spanish. That the, the the teachers feel and get that content mm-hmm. language and those. Um, examples that they could be um, doing in their classrooms but but thank mm-hmm. you for for that um, yeah, suggestion yeah, so we'll yeah because we, yeah they, they need um like i mentioned yeah. if we don't have i'm mm-hmm. glad we come and and work with yeah, you and see what they need mm-hmm. and i could serve as an example mm-hmm. yeah because it's like it's hard for them to like okay yeah. make the switch from english to spanish or, or vice yeah, versa definitely it is hard to do it in an environment when you're already in the classroom like in paper everything looks perfect it looks yeah. pretty good <laughs> but then 